well. So today I'm talking about relapse prevention. Um, I'm going to be talking what it is, what, how to spot the signs, all of that stuff. And I've taken this information from this relapse prevention pack, which is an absolutely amazing resource. I would print one out yourself. Um, it's by the National Phobic Society and uh, it's taken, I took it from um, anxiety dot, uh, sorry, anxietyuk.org. All the information as well as the link for this is in the description below. I really would suggest printing one out yourself. This is actually just um, purely for sort of anxiety disorders. However, there really isn't much difference between this and like depression and, and other mental illness. So you've just got to replace some of the words. So although this focuses on anxiety, you can apply it to all mental illnesses. So without further ado, let's talk about relapse prevention. What is a relapse? Excuse me, reading. Um, so what is a relapse? Relapse is the term used to describe an increase in unhelpful thinking and behaviours after a period of feeling improved or after experiencing better mental health. A relapse can involve difficulties coping with day-to-day -day activities, increased anxiety or depression if you have depression, increased symptoms of panic or increased negative thoughts. So if you have mental illness um, it's likely that you've um, you, you may have had um, through your journey of mental illness you may have had times when you relapsed there may be times when you're okay for a few months maybe even a year or so and then have a relapse um, so th I'm talking about talking to those people, I'm talking to carers as well, anyone who cares for someone who has mental illness, all, all really important for all of you guys to look out for these things to help prevent a relapse. Why do we need relapse prevention? What is it? Well, relapse prevention is used is the term used to describe a way of identifying unhelpful thinking and behaviours and reducing them with the aim of promoting positive behaviours, thoughts and feelings which may prevent ill health both physical and emotional from recurring. So it's not just um, people with mental illness that have relapse, people with physical illness, illness can have relapse as well. So whatever your illness is, Knowing, know, knowing that there's a possibility of having a relapse is a really good way to, to kind of keep that thought in your head and to kind of say, you know, I'm going to avoid that at all cost. But sometimes we, we may, may just have a lapse. And so it doesn't go into a full-blown relapse. A lapse is different from a relapse. It could be a small slip in behaviour or thought, which is then recognised or challenged. So in one of my recent videos, Challenging Thinking Errors, if you are starting to feel that your negative thoughts are increasing, your distorted thoughts, are increasing but you're able to challenge them or even recognize them when they're happening that could be just a little lapse and I for me I've had many lapses over the years and I've always been worried they're going to turn into a relapse and it doesn't matter if they do it just means that you know it means you're poorly again and that's not very good so a lapse is not a full relapse so don't think if you have one little slip that that's it you're you're, you're you know you're doomed you're not it's just a little lapse so what can cause a relapse? Why does this happen? Why is it that you know we go along and we're, we're quite healthy, we're quite happy, and we're stable, and then suddenly things can happen, and suddenly we're not so stable anymore, and we might uh, go towards a relapse or a lapse. So a relapse can occur for many reasons, including specific events, objects, thoughts, or anything that can lead to an increase in anxiety, or negative thinking, or low mood, or paranoia perhaps. Um, and these situations are often called triggers. I have done a video on triggers for my 31 days of BPD. I want to stress that triggers aren't just for people with BPD and they aren't just for people with mental illness either. You can have anything, you know, you could be kind of, um, you know, relatively stable and but then suddenly you move house. And moving house is probably one of the most stressful things apart from, I think, is it divorce and death? Moving house. So here's some more examples of triggers. So I've given you one there, moving house. Stopping or changing medication can also could could cause a, a relapse. I know when I've switched meds before, especially when I've switched antidepressants, I have to you have to come off one before you go on another. Obviously, otherwise you'll be mixing them, and that's not so good. But what can happen, and what's happened with me, is when I've stopped. Um, sometimes it can be too abruptly, and even when I've been advised by medical professionals to phase them out in a week and then start with another one, I personally think that is too quick. So if you are switching meds, try and do it over a longer period. I know it, it'll take time, but if you come off any medication very quickly, you will go through withdrawal. And um, 
I've had this and mainly because I've been advised by other people to do it. So yeah, I'm going off on a tangent there. So stopping or changing your meds can do that. Physical ill health. So if you are, you know, maybe depression, if you have depression, sorry, and then you get poorly, maybe you get a cold, it's this time we're going into the autumn, winter, winter is coming um sorry um so if, if we're going into that time of year when people are getting colds and coughs and flu and things like that that could trigger you if you get poorly it might make you go might make you think oh i'm, I'm weak and blah, 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 blah. it might challenge you know you might it might bring with it lots of negative thinking um so that's one area conclusion of therapy when i finished my um steps and stairways i felt a bit lost for a while when i was discharged from the mental health clinic i felt very lost things like that can be um, triggers and change in circumstances sometimes change can cause a lot of stress sometimes change can be good and positive but a lot of the time especially if you have mental illness that can um change in circumstances could, could a change in anything can 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 be quite triggering so what do we do here well identify your own triggers get a piece of paper write them down write anything down that maybe you know brings up something bad reminds you of something bad and obviously i don't it's, it's i don't want to trigger you by by getting you to do this so maybe just do gentle things but the, it's really important to know what triggers you because what triggers you might not trigger someone else and if you're a carer of someone who has mental illness if, if you know their triggers you can work with them to help prevent things as well so triggers so what can we do to, to to try and stop this relapse we know what causes it what are the warning signs now i've done a video on spotting the signs of mental illness these are kind of a bit similar to that but um be aware that if you are a care of someone or if you are the one who is poorly if you recognize any of these things it could be the sign of a relapse it could just be a lapse I'm not saying that if you've got all of these things, you're definitely going to have a relapse either. These are just some warning signs that maybe keep an eye out if you're a carer or anyone, just keep an eye out for these. Can't say that in more times, can I? So common signs include altered sleeping patterns. So too much sleep, not enough sleep, waking up late, you know, waking, go, can't go to bed till, can't, sorry, go to sleep, takes your age to get to sleep, things like that. Changes in mood. So maybe your mood is changing. You're becoming a bit more, getting more of a low mood. Maybe you're getting some paranoia. Maybe you're feeling more panicked. Remember, thoughts, feelings, and behaviors are disturbed when we have mental illness. The next one, changes in your behavior. Are you reducing your activity? Have you um, been phoning in sick maybe to work or to school? Um, are you, if you have OCD, are your checking behaviors um, increasing? Are you checking more? Um, and you know, if you have depression, are you are you feeling that you're battling with a low mood every day? That could be a sign that you're having a relapse. Sorry, that was altered behaviour. So, not just altered feelings, altered behaviour. So you might be seeing re re seeking reassurance from people, or it may be even that you're going to dangerous behaviours such as drug taking, um, uh, uh, promiscuous sex, anything like that. If you're, if you're noticing those signs, it could be a sign. Again, if you have all of these, doesn't mean you're having a relapse. I'm just saying these are the signs to look out for. Avoidance. Now, this is very big for me. When I feel more poorly, I will avoid more. I will cancel more. I will um, let people down. That's what I say in my head because I feel like I let people down when I cancel. But that's another way. If you're avoiding things, it means that you're not able to cope with it, which means you're more likely to... So avoid things, so you'll be, you might even, sorry, avoid things, so you may become socially isolated, which could then actually make your illness worse. Um, or if you're phoning in sick uh, uh, to school or college, you know, you might be um, in trouble about your attendance. So if you're noticing those sort of things, again, this could be a sign. Changes in how you think, so altered thinking. So it could be that you're thinking more about, you know, say if you're depressed, you might be thinking more about death. This is a sign for me when I'm feeling low. If I start to think about people dying, me dying, um, uh, you know, anything to do with death, seeing dead bodies, seeing my dead body, all of that. If those thoughts are coming in my head, I know that I'm not doing so well. Um, changes in physical symptoms. So you might become more tired. You might become, um, if you if you suffer from any sort of uh, bipolar or um, any psychosis, you might be getting more manic. If you're noticing your mania increasing, or your um, so to make you more hyper, and your you know your you know your heart rate's going and things like that, that could be a sign. Um, so just make sure that you're kind of keeping an eye on things, knowing what's good and what's what's not, what's not so good. 
increased irritability anger and irritation come from uh, anxiety it's the same thought it's the same sort of process so if you are becoming more irritable that could be a sign that maybe your mood is becoming um, more anxious or more angry lack of concentration all of this will cause you to have lack of concentration so you may feel that you're not focusing as much maybe you know you're watching the telly and you're not actually paying attention to what happens or you're reading and you're not really taking it in anything like that it just shows that you're part of your brain that needs that to do that concentration isn't working properly which could be a sign of a relapse so how do we prevent these things from happening well one way to do it gosh this video is going a bit too long sorry guys self-monitoring if you have anxiety a good way to do this to monitor where you are is to give yourself a scale so you have maybe naught to ten now if you all say naught to three you could be kind of like okay i'm managing things okay i'm coping okay i'm challenging i'm reinforcing all of that kind of stuff and maybe when you think you're at the eight nine ten you think, okay, I need to chill, I need to do something, I need to shift focus, I need to distract. So self-monitoring, thinking about how you're feeling, thinking about your thoughts, challenging those thoughts. Um, maybe if you are, if you're able to go and talk to someone, maybe a GP, sorry, see your GP if you need to get a referral, see if you've got the ability to see a psychiatrist or a psychologist, do that, or a counsellor, any occupational therapist, social worker that is working in the sort of mental health community, try and speak to them. And if you can, try and do positive things for yourself. So if you're starting to feel that you're, you're, you're self-monitoring and it's not kind of working, then do things have a backup plan to say right i know this isn't happening so okay i'm having a really negative day what can i do to shift focus can i do something positive like see a friend or um you know do something different whatever you can self-monitoring i have to do this with my bpd i have to i measure my emotions from naught to five do the same if you like and i know that when i'm in a sort of level one uh, so these are different levels of emotions with my level one, zero or one i'm doing good i'm happy i'm safe i'm stable if i go up to the levels three four or five i'm get, becoming less stable and i find with my bpd if i'm at a level four or five for more than a week or so then i'm not doing very well at all and the people around me will definitely notice that too also part of this self-monitoring is knowing when you're in a high no knowing when to avoid the high risk situation so for example you may have agoraphobia as as a sort of phobia so you know that a high risk situation for you is being outside in crowded places so maybe if you're starting to see the warning signs then don't put yourself in those high risk situations because they could trigger you and make you more poorly so so knowing no knowing those situations i know for me that when i'm not doing so well going out um you know around tesco's or something like that is very very triggering for me because I, I i i look at people i think they're looking at me um, i get very paranoid uh, very self-conscious so i know that when i'm feeling poorly don't go and do that maybe go to a quiet little shop where there's not many people things like that just checking out your high risk situa situations and finally let's talk about some of the preventive strategies to preventing this relapse from happening or a lapse happening so preventative strategies in in could include thinking about how you feel so talking to someone again you can write things down write down how you feel just just keep an eye keep an eye and an ear on what you're thinking if you're starting to think negative stuff um, and it, it will make you feel negative and if you're feeling negative it could make you think negatively so keep thinking about how you're feeling and thinking about your thoughts okay um, relaxation techniques I'm gonna be doing these in the next sort of six to eight months doing a few different breathing techniques and things like that but go online YouTube is a great resource for meditation and relaxation I've done loads of them really really good diary writing so writing a mood journal this is really helpful not for everybody not everyone likes to write but some people do i find it really really helpful especially if i can sort of track myself over a week and say okay so maybe monday and tuesday my levels were higher what happened on monday and tuesday to make them higher you know kind of evaluate what's going on by writing down everything rewarding yourself so when things go well when you challenge those thoughts reward yourself but do it with something positive don't go for the drugs the alcohol the binge eating the, the spending all of that kind of stuff although they can feel very rewarding because of the dopamine release they're actually not good things to to be doing because they could take you down trigger you alcohol can trigger depression so can drugs so um and anxiety and things like that if if you're prone to being affected by drugs in that way diet 
diet and exercise I'm gonna be doing a video coming up soon about about things like that but diet and exercise diet there's I'm gonna do a video on food and mood because there's a huge link between what we eat I know when I sorry what we eat and our mood I know when I eat rubbish I feel rubbish and diet as well diet can release endorphins which is a natural um, painkiller that the body releases so that can make you feel great if you have depression um, any exercise I mean I do yoga but anything that's kind of going to be quite relaxing for you as well is really good for anxiety um, uh, making a plan make a plan ahead of time to sort of say this could happen this could happen not to kind of like stress yourself out and like plan for the worst but planning for positive things make time for positive stuff distraction and refocusing so if you're starting to feel like you're going down in this relapse then distract yourself positive distractions go for a walk do something nice do something nice for yourself do something nice for someone else positive sink thinking positive sinking positive sinking I said twice <laughs> positive thinking and self-talk so I do these a lot these are positive affirmations and I say the same for every day um, lots of people care about me I'm healthy and happy um, I'm rich in every way and I forgot the other one but yeah you'll get the idea so positive affirmations if you start to have the negative thoughts replace them with positive affirmations so that is um, relapse prevention this book has got so much more in it than I've done today but I couldn't cover it all because it's quite a long video but hopefully that will be really interesting please check it out it's all in the description below if you have any questions or comments please put them in the space please like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time take care guys bye now